Hi, this is Zarka, and I am going to show you how to do a wire wrapped loop. Not a loop on a head pin, but a loop to put on um, a bracelet or as a link in a chain. Um, for instance, like this. You have a loop on one side of the bead and a loop on the other side, and then you can add it to a bracelet or a necklace or earrings. Uh, let's see if I can get this done. Okay, let's hope that we can see everything that's going on here. Okay, so I've cut myself um, a piece of uh, 20 gauge wire. It can be any length that you want it to be. If I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of loops, then you know I'll have a a couple of feet available to me. And uh, what I do with the wire at this point is I, I set a place on my thumb. Um, I look for a spot that I can reproduce over and over again. One of the lines on my thumb to determine how long of a tail I'm going to have. Where you set it on your thumb over time you will learn. Depending on the thickness of the wire, the thicker the wire, the bigger the diameter of the loop that you're going to make, and the more loops around the base wire you want to do, the longer you need the tail to be. So um, the first couple times you, you practice, and then when you find exactly the right length, you remember the spot on your thumb, and then for the rest of the necklace or the bracelet, you can reproduce it exactly. So I'm going to choose um, this big um, knuckle wrinkle right there, and at the tip of my fingernail, I make a 90 degree turn. Now I take my round nose pliers, and where on the round, round nose pliers you place the wire will determine the diameter of the loop. If I place it here, the diameter will be big. If I place it here, the diameter will be little. Uh, what you can do is put marks on your pliers, either with um, black marker, or you can take a file and you can file notches very gently on the outside of your pliers so that you have marks that you can clearly see so that you can reproduce your work. I'm going to choose this notch right here and make a fairly big loop and I set this in the in the crook of the 90 degree angle so that it's parallel like this and move the tail around the top of the plier. I have to turn it a bit make sure it stays in the same spot and then I pull the wire just slightly over 90 degrees because I find that makes a better wrap when I do that. Then it begins to wrap right at the circle not farther down so if you've ever had any uh, misshapen rounds that could possibly be what's causing it. At this point I take my flat nose pliers and I grab the circle that I've, I've created there and either take my um, another pair of flat nose or a pair of needle nose or a good pair of round nose and I begin to bend that around the base wire and this is called a, a hangman's noose or um, a wrapped loop um, I think it's called a number of other things as well but it's a really nice secure way of doing it because you're looping around instead of just a round link that can come undone. This can't come undone. It can get stretched under extreme force, but you know it has to be pretty extreme. <clears throat> now the pliers that I used, um, I, they don't have any sharp edges or gouges, so they won't mar my wire. The other secret to not marring your wire or marking your wire is to not use a death grip. Just hold it as much as you can uh, with as much force as will hold the wire. If it slips, then I use a little bit more force. Um, so I just keep going around. And what I have here... Now, at this point, a lot of people will snip it off, and that's something you can do. You've gotten three three rounds or two rounds, and you, and you like the look of that, and you don't want to go any further. You can just snip your wire at that point. Um, but I, I like to not waste any wire, especially if I'm working with gold or silver. So, there we go. And I have three and a half loops. Um, for this last little bit, I take my crimping pliers, and I circle that little bit around. And... I have my loop. <clears throat> Often um, I hammer my loops um, to give them a nice finished look. And also if there happens to be any wire marks, sometimes the hammer 
or wire marks, uh, plier marks. Sometimes the plier marks will disappear with the hammering. And there we have it. We have a wrapped loop. Now to do the other end, you slip a bead on. Now this bead isn't a very good example because it has too big of a hole and the piece was, um, the wire wrap was going straight in into the hole. So let's grab a different bead. Oh, here's a nice ocean jasper. Okay. So here what I do is I want the wrapping on this side to be the same distance away from the bead as it is on this side. How am I going to know when to start the 90 degree turn for the loop? Well, what I do is I take my needle nose pliers, and because they gradually increase in size, I can set them here, see how far the wrapping goes, right about there, look at my pliers, put them in the same place on this end, give them a 90 degree bend. Set my pliers at exactly the same spot where I had my little gouge and rotate it over. Now at this point you'll want to know if you want this wire to be in parallel with this loop. So this loop and this loop will go the same or will this loop be at a 90 degree angle to this one. It, it makes a difference when you're making earrings or certain kinds of designs. And so we do that. Turn a little bit. Take it past the 90 degree just like we did before. <clears throat> Grab the flat nose, hold it as close as you can to where the wires cross so that you don't end up with loops that are um, squashed or oval. And push that wire up with your fingernail to get it to be moving at a 90 degree angle. And wrap that around. Now we go three and a half times just like the other one. Actually that one ended up going four but it looks okay. On this side it's three, so it's, it'll be fine. And then snip it with your flat nose, um, flush cutters, sorry, not flat nose cutters, but flush cutters, as close to that as you can get it. They'll be a little bit sticking out, and then what I do, um, I like these because it doesn't touch the stone, and quite often I'm using stones that if I use pliers on, I might damage the stone, and that wouldn't be okay. Um, so I use my crimping pliers and I crimp that little end in and there we have a link that's wrapped on both sides. I give this side a bit of a hammer so it matches the other. Be sure not to hit your bead with the hammer. There you go. Now I look back and I make sure that I don't have any plier marks and if I do um, I grab my Dremel and I will sand out or file out or Dremel out um, any of the tool marks that could possibly be left. and I'm not going to bother turning it on because it's going to make a bunch of noise and you don't need to hear that. <clears throat> um, using a Dremel at first, I, li I like using the pointy tips because then I can get right inside and, and deep into the crevices of what I'm working on. They take a little bit of um, time to get used to. Um, because they're rotating, they like to whoop, take off on you and whoop, take off onto the stone. So you have to really hold them. I, I keep my hand on the desk and I kind of press my hand down and I hold it firm and then I move my jewelry around the Dremel, not the Dremel around the jewelry, when at all possible. And that is hopefully um, a simplified clearer picture. <laughs> that you're able to see what I did, and I hope it made sense. Thanks for watching. Bye.